You know, the voices in our society are so loud that even I, considering my vast background in female empowerment, sometimes doubt how women can compete with men. But only because we live in society that forces us to mimic men, to adjust our behavior, to lower our voices when pitching, or adopt more aggressive leadership lifestyle because it will make people to take us more seriously. And being a woman in a world designed and tailored to men is like being a tennis player competing in a football field. And as a fem female founder of a femtech company that focuses on menstrual health, I face it on a daily basis. So my job is to talk about periods. And with people who are not necessarily comfortable to do that, I say to women that no, our differences do not indicate that we are weaker. And I'm really impressed by younger generation of women who surprisingly don't want to suffer because they are openly embrace the pain-free and more productive life in alignment with their bodies. While older women, for example, millennials like me, we sometimes hesitate and say something like, you know, I've been suffering for 20 years. I've taken painkillers for the whole of my life. And now you're coming and telling me that I could have had a completely different life? No, thank you. I will just wait until menopause and have some rest. And I say to investors that no, female market is not niche because women is the half of the world's population, and it's a half of the world. So I also have conversations with companies, and I say to them that no, focusing and implementing women's benefits does not discriminate against men. It's just a simple and necessary step towards a more inclusive and equitable work environment. And there is no equality for working women in any country in the world. The latest World Bank's report shows that even the wealthiest countries still do not provide equal opportunities. And the gender gap is much wider than they previously thought. A recent shocking investigation of sugar industry in India revealed that labor women often don't have any other options but going through hysterectomies. Women are literally taking their uterus out, because without uterus, we don't have to take an extra daughter appointment. Without a uterus, we don't have to endure the hardship of menstruation in the field with no access to utilities, water, toilets. Without uterus, it's just simpler, right? And women are literally losing parts of their bodies in the response of societal call. Cut out your differences. Be like men. Be less than men. And inequality doesn't just go to these extreme examples. It's in our everyday lives. And it actually includes something as simple and routine as our corporate white-collar jobs. Because women in the workplace have to adjust with a 24, with a five to nine to five work routine, which is surprisingly perfectly synchronized with a male 24 hour hormonal cycle. The world ignores that women have not their smaller but completely different bodies and a 28 day cycle that impacts everything. Our energy level, productivity, sleep, mood, the list goes on forever. And women in the workplace, majority of them, Two out of three say themselves that periods negatively act, impact their work life. And they experience severe symptoms from excessive bleeding, headache, abdominal cramps, irritation, and fatigue. But periods themselves are not the problem. Stigmatization of menstrual health, which leads to deteriorating women's mental health, is the problem. Historical imbalance in scientific research, which is predominantly conducted by a male's body, is the problem. The imbalance in inadequate access to medical support, which leads women to 
remain undiagnosed for decades is the problem. And lack of basic information and basic education on women's health is the problem. So, menstrual health is still very much stigmatized. Women themselves say openly that it impacts them. Companies know that the, uh, the well-being gender gap is increasing, and they have ways to close it. Some of them already do, and others have to keep up. Because there are a lot of ways how companies have, can take steps forward to closing this well-being gender gap, including providing women with free period products, access to digital health apps, are including facilities, adequate insurance, and so on. And these costs are not that significant. And it's not just the right thing to do. It actually drives productivity, profitability, and reduces turnover. Understanding of what's happening with our bodies can be and should be is a way to unlock our superpower. Because periods and the menstrual cycle is our superpower. It is not a source of shame, stigma, and pain. And multiple research shows how we can work with our periods, not against it. For example, during the menstrual phase, we need to focus on self-care, solo tasks, and prioritizing some moderate physical activities. During the follicular phase with the rise of estrogen, we're more sociable, and we are open to new discoveries, to brainstorming, to teamwork, and networking events. At regulation, we have a peak of creativity and a peak of confidence, which helps us to go with confidence through uh, tough negotiations and decision-making processes, as well as conducting amazing public speaking events. And during luteal phase, we are more inclined towards solo tasks again, administrative tasks, and we have a rise of focus. So knowing what's happening with our bodies is just having a manual that helps us to predict how we're going to feel the whole month. And it really frustrates me that people and majority of society still believes in astrology and scientific approach is losing this information war. But give us some time. I've been thinking a lot that we, as women, really afraid to be different from men because differences are usually perceived as weaknesses but everything they can do we can do bleeding thank you